Welcome back to my channel. This is Rashid. Today I'm going to explain you uh, another Im very important component of the entire cloud structure. Okay, so I'm doing different videos uh, and it's important that you watch my videos in a sequence. So this is entire and I try to give a little bit of revision in every video so that you never know somebody new joins the channel and they don't know what I'm, I'm talking about okay so overall this is our the structure we are talking and today's video is about this one okay so in this example that i am um, using so far clock arrives here now how i how clock arrives here the structure between here to here um and the off chip and what happens within PLR divider and all that, that is topic for other videos. Uh, but in this one, I just assume clock arrives here. Physically, a clock arrives here. Okay, mean through a metal, some sort of connection, a wire is here. Okay, and clock is coming. So we have A, B, C, three clocks coming here, but I'm just using just one clock as an example. And the same discussion applies for other. And also I'm discuss saying one partition, maybe a little bit of this partition, uh, but the same disc discussion or same concept apply to other partitions. Got that? Okay, clock comes here. Now you, you have these one, I'm just uh, using here, how many? Uh, seven flip-flops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you know that they, this block could be like 20,000 flops. And they are all over the place. Uh, in this corner, this corner, this edge, inside, here, 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 here. I've just picked these seven edges to, um, just to represent different locations within the block. Or this could be your entire die and then your cloud source is coming from here and then you're doing it's a small chip and you're doing a um, you need to do a cloud distribution from that point to it so depends on how you look at it. but let's look at from a partition point of view <clears throat> one block point of view and a decent size block. Uh, hundreds uh, 20,000 block let's say I think that's okay um, so what do we do we connect from here and there, and that was how much this was. Um, this whole thing was, I think, 2,500 micron. So about um, uh, 12 and a half thousand, uh, hundred here. So maybe a thousand, that's a thousand micron. So thousand micron, you need connect from here to here, like one millimeter. So can you just connect this wire to here? What happens if you put that? Let's say I just connect a wire here on a certain metal, connect this one. I mean, not exactly like this straight, but it goes here and then connects here. And, but just wires. I just connect them wires to all the seven ones. I, I forgot to connect this guy. Okay. What happens? As you probably guessed that... Uh, if let's say clock comes here and our clock is um, right, let's say ideal clock so this nodes come here again this is some dips uh, assume it's a hundred percent uh, 50 50 uh, duty cycle by the time it this clock comes here if this is a very long line what happened it has a lot of resistance and a lot of capacitance so RC together, that mean RC represent was delay. So two things that happen. Uh, this capacitor will, uh, this, this line will have a huge capacitance. So you, you are basically applying this way from here. <clears throat> there is a lot of resistance. This node if this is very high capacitance, this node will start charging. This this represents I mean this load here. Right? That's I'm representing here, even though this is distributed. Uh, this signal will become like it will take a lot of time charging. You see that 
whole cloth thing that came as let's say input like this but this is still charging because there's a huge capacitance there right and also it will take a lot of delay between the edges so your clock becomes like this <laughs> something like that you see the point i'm trying to make um, r and c are large there was a huge transition time your transition time is impacted and it may never reach that point it may take forever i mean for this one it will but it will be with the delay shape of the clock will be disturbed as well uh, delay from this point to this point will be huge like if this clock starts here that moment this clock reaches the 50 percent point will be somewhere around here right so because of all those issues because of all those issues what we do you're probably thinking yes what we do is we put buffers there right so what we do is okay i think i'm gonna just keep um sketching over it hopefully that's okay that's okay which color is good let's put, bring pink you're probably thinking rashid okay why not put a buffer which is the right approach yes we need to put buffers so that uh, the property of the buffer is cmos buffers or inverters i mean we can have this inverter and this inverter they will act as a buffer as long as you have even number of inverters it's fine if you do an art well that could be fine but what happens a clock here will reach like that another point will reach like that this will disturb your timing relationship so you don't want to have an inversion happening on the clock. You can put inverters, but as long as <coughs> together they can don't invert the entire logic. They invert, but you have another inverter which brings it back. That's fun. Okay. So what you need, which is fine because um, CMOS is a good, it kind of regenerates the circuit. You know, these are um, inverter. Yeah has a property if somehow signal is weak here because this is connected to vcc or ground and as soon as one of these transistors on if it pulls it ground it will make a good ground if it connects high as long as there's no huge resistance of those mosses which i'm, I'm assuming is not uh, it will get you take it to vcc <coughs> oh, sorry <clears throat> so you see the point CMOS is, is very good uh, on recovering noise, recovering logic levels. Uh, so if, <clears throat> if these are able to bring the, these regular um, buffers or the <clears throat> uh, cells will be able to uh, recover the clock tree. So instead of having this one, they will soon, because now you have divided this into smaller loads and each one is this cell will be able to drive. They, these are strong enough to drive this load. They will not make uh, the waveform look like that. So eventually still there is a delay. You see the point here and here, there is a delay. Yeah, you are absolutely right. So if this point clock is, no, not like that. If at this point, sorry, I'm drawing, trying to draw better. This one, uh, this clock here, at this point, it will reach. Duty cycle is disturbed, but that's okay. Just assume it's, it's a good one. So there is a, uh, there is a delay. But as long as <clears throat> so this waveform wise is fine, it's good. I think that's fine. So we know that there will be delay of the wire. There will be delay of the cells. So you, uh, hopefully uh, you, you got that point, but it, it good um, segue into the next point. So there, if there, if you, sorry, if there is a delay here, you put one, two, three, four, five, because this was far away. And let's say, actually I didn't assume that, but let's say there is a path between output of this goes into D of this one through an AND gate there, because AND gate can take path from here or multiplex. So let's say there is a timing path, means the output of this goes through some combination circuits and all that come here. 
Now this flip-flop is sitting pretty close. So if you use the same approach that you used before, you will put one buffer here, maybe another one here. Okay, what happens now? You're launching a path here. Again, I'm assuming all this is taken care of. Zero point really starts here. So your start point is here. You have a lot of delay. Now go back to those timing reports that I did. Um, and I was assuming zero delay, but now we have actually a delay. <clears throat> and then it comes back here and then goes into it. Now you're capturing, your capture delay is pretty fast, right? If this was, let's say, let's pick a number, nanosecond. Right? This is 0.3 nanosecond or 0.4 nanosecond or 0.5 nanosecond. And do you know the impact of that? If your capture is short, means you are even capturing now earlier, means your cycle is reduced. Your setup time is, 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 uh, is much more stringent. So this will be more difficult to converge if there are a lot of logic on it. So what we want, the, the, the conclusion here is what we want is Yes, we want to put buffers here. Uh, we want to put a buffer tree on it. But we also want to have uh, a balanced one. We want to have whatever delay the longest one had because we cannot shorten it. I mean, we, we have to put these buffers to ensure that transition times are valid. Um, right? But once we did that, whatever, let's say it's one nanosecond, we also want this point to be one nanosecond. Here comes latency, right? So I'm doing so much stuff here. Um, so if if so, latency is an important thing. Latency or clock delay to each endpoint. I mean, ideally, we want to have, for example, there is no according to this picture, there's no timing path between this and this, right? So even this one is a higher delay, this one is a short delay, not a problem. They, they don't have a timing path. But this one has a timing path, this one. But the, and this one has a timing path, this one. So in order to balance this one, you have to balance this one. This one is not directed to this one, but when you make this one nanosecond, this is 5.5 .5 nanosecond. This is not good, so you make one nanosecond. So generally if you try to do it where path is valid or not it, it can take a lot of time it can maybe some valid paths some paths were valid now maybe in, in future rtl they become so all that is much easier to say that okay i'm gonna do so my longest of one nanosecond i'm gonna do even the shorter one nanosecond here how you will do one nanosecond right so you the tool might have to or you might have to i mean all this tool takes care of it, by the way. You don't have to do this manually. Um, but what what happen, What can happen, can happen is tool might take it a little bit. I mean, not like as bad as I drew, but something like that. So overall, buffers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And some sort of delay matches to this branch. So what, what it means is tool is now balancing latency to every endpoint. And what with a balance thing is a skew. <clears throat> when the latency difference between this point, let's call it um, L1, and the highest, let's say this was L max. And maybe to now tool will try to do one nanosecond everything but you know that okay it's just sometimes the the way it selects this cell maybe route might not be exactly similar maybe their metals are not exactly similar so there will be some variations and some of them will be closed maybe tool was not able to give give exactly similar kind of replication here and this one is super small which is so close so maybe it's uh, it's a little bit less delay so there will be a, a latency max and there will be a latency min overall in in the entire design uh, i'm not saying they those are a valid part between them but that that difference l max 
an element is called your skew it's actually called your global skew because what you are doing is you are calculating the maximum latency in the whole design and the minimum latency and those two paths could be this and this and you see there's no direct path so this even though this looks very bad may not be a problem right because there is no timing path and maybe there is no timing path for this is for this one this is meeting has a time for this one but to this one nanosecond and this one may be uh, 0.8 nanosecond and this is 0.5 so you know what this huge delay here doesn't matter the actual one this matter because they have a timing path and there there that's why there's another component of global skew that's called a local skew local skew has as you already guessed has valid the path where valid timing is and the skew that really matters there but this is more so for initial reporting a global skew you probably be thinking why not always report this why not report this is a good initial measure of the overall clock tree because we didn't tell the tool only balance them when there is a valid path we tell the tool to balance every flop so this is a good initial metric but if if tool is not doing much better job and this is comes really good you're good for now and so these latency global skew local skew these are an important component of it but you probably how tool builds this this tree in the middle so what tool does is it typically is called a clock trees synthesis and this has this is an edge tree so it starts here it kind of draws then first edge then on each node then another edge I mean, this can be like this here too, right? Kind of different orientation of it. So this pretty much, I mean, my, <clears throat> uh, for example, what I'm trying to say is the boundary I pick is a little bit further away, but if it needs to, it will create more edges, not just this one. Keep that in mind. If it now will contain connection for example a flop here flop here flop here flop here or flop here we connect to this one flop here we connect to this one flop so any flops in this region will be connected to this node any flops here will be disconnected to this one any flops here will be connected to this one so this is where the final connection is made so you see kind of uh, uh, if you look at this then it will put a cells across each Anyway, I think maybe it makes sense to stop the video here. Uh, I will restart from, from this picture in the next video. And there are important concepts there. Otherwise, this video will be too long. All right. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.